Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is December 23rd, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, China unveils a new game aimed at keeping you an obedient slave. And Kurt Russell ramps up his fight on the Second Amendment. Meanwhile, guns are topping Americans' Christmas wish list. And Joe Biggs interviews a Trump supporter that the DNC wishes didn't exist. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 Paul Joseph Watson has a new article out today detailing how China has a credit score system for obedient citizens. Here's Leanne McAdoo with more. That's right, Jakari. Now, 1984 was not supposed to be an instruction manual. It was more of a warning. But now we are seeing China introducing a credit score for obedient citizens. Now, this is basically a video game where you earn points by behaving like the government wants you to behave. So all of China's largest social networks, they've partnered with the country's communist government and they've created this credit score system. It's called Sesame Credit and it measures how obedient its citizens are. Not only does it measure your purchases and your bill paying history to determine your credit worthiness, but it also your political compliance. And so among the things that it says will hurt a citizen's score are posting political opinions without prior permission or posting information that the regime doesn't like, such as about the Tiananmen Square massacre, or of course the Shanghai stock market collapse. And interestingly, it'll hurt not only your score, but it'll also hurt your friend's score as well, anyone that you interact with on social media. So this is a, a larger move um, for publicly shaming people who post controversial opinions, because as we know, in a lot of these Asian countries, shame is absolutely the worst thing that that a person can do, bringing shame upon your family. And so this is uh, this will be a move towards social isolation for people who express controversial opinions or dissent, anything that's anti-government. And you can already see how China is actively working against people who um, are, are displeased with how the government is treating them. The Chinese media has actually accused labor activists there of disrupting social order. And the, the leader of one of these labor rights groups was actually jailed. Uh, six other people were detained as well. And these people were just trying to help workers uh, get payment of wages and unpaid benefits. So these people were riling up uh, these workers. And of course, that's not allowed. So they were jailed. And so you can see how an Internet ID system like this, where you're uh, basically earning these credit points for criticizing or obeying the government, how that could um, turn out to really harm a person. Now, Paul Watson points out in his article how this would basically be the PC police wet dream to have this type of control. You'll recall that feminists actually went before the United Nations in September. There was a panel entitled Cyber Violence Against Women and Girls, a Global Wake Up Call. 
And these feminists who are part of the whole Gamergate scandal, they were basically asking the United Nations um, to censor the Internet, the entire Internet, in order to save their feelings. And they even mentioned things like people call us stupid or they disagree with our opinions. And so these are the type of things that these women wanted them to censor the entire Internet because of this. And, of course, we reported in 2014 that the White House is already testing a Chinese-style Internet ID. Uh, they, they were working on a pilot program in 2014. It was called the National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace. And this would would replace the current system of using passwords to access any sensitive online accounts. And they would use something more akin to a biometric ID card. And it would link all of your government accounts, uh, such as food stamps, welfare, and um, you know mortgage applications, applications for driver's licenses, things like that. And so, of course, if it was successful, it would actually pave the way um, for an interoperable authentication protocol that you could use across the entire web uh, to access, you know, Facebook and, and, and your health insurance. And since web access will be linked to an individual user's identity, that can be restricted at any time if that person decides to dissent against the state, much like they're already doing in China. And of course, that's not it. If you upload all of your biometric information into a government database, that's leaving it entirely vulnerable to hackers. As Chris Christie lamented in the last Republican debate, he was upset about the fact that his fingerprints and private information had been scooped up in the latest massive data breach of the government database. So it's all a very dangerous move, a dangerous direction we're going in. Um, and China, their internet ID system, presently this game is opt-in. Users can decide if they want to um, go ahead and start using this credit score system, but it is going to become mandatory in 2020. So will it be headed our way soon? I don't know. Back to you, Jakari. Thanks, Leanne. And we can't talk about obedience without talking about the mighty TSA. And we see the article, now the TSA can force you to go through the body scanner. And this basically documents how DHS has changed procedures to the advanced imagery technology protocols. And they're saying that the officers can now insist that travelers go through the controversial machines. Now, it's one thing to insist, hey, sir, we would like you to uh, move through this line to uh, speed up the process. That's one thing. But if this insistence forces you to miss your flight, that's when I have a problem with it. Because, you know, working here at InfoWars, I've opted out quite a bit, as well as many other people in the crew. Uh, you go through the procedure. You have to stand there in the line uh, just waiting for somebody to come and get to you eventually. And then you get over there. They, uh, I was just talking to Leanne about this earlier, how they take all this stuff out of our bags. You know, last time I flew, they took uh, toothpaste and eye drops out of my bag, you know, because that's what every terrorist has in their uh, carry-on luggage. Um, not to mention that we've seen reports of guys going through the scanners, coming out on the other side with firearms, all type of things going on in their luggage. And it reminds me of the no-fly list, just the complete security theater of the TSA. And I had this, uh, this thought this weekend uh, while I was thinking about the no-fly, no-gun-buy list. And as bad as I harp on the TSA, and I'm definitely not defending them on this, when you have something like a no-fly list, it's really not up to them because they're subject to the will in the order absolute authority of a screen. If the computer screen pops up and you're an eight-year-old Boy Scout, you know, with your Scout, you know, Eagle Scout patch just sewed on and the, and the screen says that you can't fly, then you can't fly. And it's just this complete idiocy of uh, these, these databases and how they want to continue to expand these databases where you really have no judge, no jury. Now they have added the additional step that if you are in the no-fly list or your name uh, happens to be on there, of course the eight-year-olds aren't on there. They have a similar name to somebody else. But if you do get caught up in the no-fly uh, system, you can call and say, hey, why am I on the no-fly system? But I seriously doubt that's going to get you on a plane in a timely fashion. I don't think it's something that's going to be resolved in one or two hours or so. So it's just another thing to worry about when you go through the airports now. Uh, many people have health concerns, uh, pregnant women. You know, say, hey, I don't want to get into this x-ray scanner that you say is safe, you know, 60 years ago, they said cigarettes were safe, but uh, pregnant women don't want to get into these machines and have all this radiation going on, not to mention that they can actually see inside your body. We've seen the, the videos of uh, various people have put out there, uh, how the CSA laugh at your naked body pictures, that you can see pretty much what a person looks like under their clothes. And a lot of people aren't having it. I have a friend who's actually an x-ray technician, has a degree for it, you know, works at a hospital in Oklahoma, and he says, hey, when I run my x-ray scanner, I stand behind a lead wall. 
Superman can't see behind a lead wall, but everybody else at the TSA just really doesn't seem to mind it. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. And I was talking to Alex. He said he wasn't too happy about it, so he may have some kind of stunt or something else lined up in the near future. Now let's talk about global warming. Because uh, you guys probably recall, it's the end of the year now, but at the beginning of the year, they had 2014, the warmest year on record. And I'm pretty sure there were places that were a little warmer than what they usually are, but they said here, 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 but they don't want to talk about cities like Chicago, Illinois, the coldest they had been in 100 years. Detroit, Michigan, the coldest it had been in 100 years, on and on and on. And now we have this article because they're talking about how it's super warm in D.C. Well, if you go to the state of Colorado, they have a recorded temperature of minus 51 degrees Fahrenheit. That sounds pretty damn cold to me. And they say it was verified with another thermometer, both of which have been inspected and approved by the National Weather Service. And this is uh, the words of a spokesman. It said the last time the temperature was this cold was on February 8th, uh, 1989. So, yeah, we do see these very cold temperatures, but nobody wants to talk about it. And once again, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a weatherman. I don't have a super in-depth knowledge of either climate or weather. But this is what I say to everybody. What is a carbon tax going to do to fix these problems? Because I just did that report the other day with Rob Jacobson, how all these guys who want you to spend your money on a carbon credit you know, you're some guy who rides a bus in Kentucky and to your one-bedroom apartment. They want you to pay a carbon credit. Meanwhile, they're flying around on these private jets. They're riding around in these big catered vehicles. They're renting out entire floors of hotels to have their, you know, their big conferences when they could do it easily over Skype. They don't want to talk about that. They want to leave this huge carbon footprint and leave you to pick up the tab. And I say nay to that. I don't want anything to do with it. Now, an inspiring story, or at least was inspiring to me, uh, we see a lot of Islamophobia going on because of some of the more recent attacks we've seen, not just here in the United States, but around the world. But this is a very uh, interesting story. Muslims shield Christians when al-Shabaab attacks a bus in Kenya. And it basically says uh, some Muslim passengers, mostly of whom were women, uh, they were there when the terrorists came to uh, kill some Christians. They laid down and the Christians said, hey, if you want to kill these people, you're going to have to go through us. And, uh, you know, it, the rest is history, as they say so. It's a very inspiring story. It's something that you can show your friends if uh, they are a bit Islamophobic. Now, let's talk about some things that's going on here in the United States of America. As we always see in holiday time, especially uh, in the recent years, I guess the Obama years, you would call him uh, Obama being the number one gun salesman probably in the history of the United States of America. Firearm sales are at an all-time high, and it's even being reported on mainstream news outlets like your, uh, your Today shows and things such as that. So a lot of people are getting the bug. They're getting the itch to go out and purchase a firearm. And these people aren't going out planning mass shootings. They just say, hey, I don't want Obama to take my guns. They realize that it's not always going to be a police officer there to protect them. So they want to take the matters into their own hands to protect themselves. And as we're talking about the police, sometimes they don't always keep you safe, as is the case in this video, where police have destroyed a woman's home searching for a non-existent suspect, and they offer no apology. Vonda Macklin picks up the pieces. It's like a destroying of your dream, you know? After authorities tore up her neighbor's home, poking holes in the walls with an armored military vehicle to coax out the suspect, Joplin Honky member Doug Alexis. Vonda says the homeowner repeatedly told authorities Alexis was not inside. She says the single mother of six is devastated after this ordeal. Probably the most hardest part of seeing them there was just rip her Christmas tree up and you know, and out the window it goes. Now, don't get me wrong. As we watch this story, you know, see the big military-type vehicle that they use to poke holes in this lady's house. Completely unnecessary. The guy wasn't there. They got some fraudulent information, as many times they often do. You know, we've seen countless examples of SWAT teams going to the wrong person's house, or they go to the house, the person isn't there. You know, they scare somebody's grandma to death and they blow little blow holes in babies' faces and all kinds of stuff with flashbang grenades. It's completely ridiculous, over-the-top, almost... If people weren't getting hurt, it would be kind of cartoonish and funny, but uh, people are getting hurt, and that's the issue about it. Now, on the flip side of that, I can see the body armor. I can see the military vehicles using for, uh, used for a practical purpose because, of course, we do know there are things like school shootings. There are things uh, like floods. I saw a video about here in Texas. You know, we had some real heavy flooding, and some of the officers were using the big military-type vehicles, MRAPs, things of that sort, to navigate through the uh, heavy waters and get people in and out of their homes. So, yes, I do understand there is a practical application for these